Hello, and welcome back to another Bevy Basic. In this episode, I'll be covering the complex topic of Bevy Reflect in preparation for the serialization deserialization episode, which will make up the required watching for the long awaited scenes video. This video is going to start with an overview of what is Bevy Reflect and touching on some dynamic programming principles. Where you might want or need some dynamic programming for your Bevy app or Rust in general. Finally, I'll cover how to go about using reflect objects in your code, along with the specific derives and that you'll need. This will be broken down into the subsection of the type registry, the reflect trait, the from reflect derive, and the dynamic traits derives. To get started, what is Bevy Reflect? Well, the crates page puts it quite succinctly. It's a crate that enables you to dy dynamically interact with Rust's strong type system. But what does this actually mean? The Bevy Reflect crate allows you to create systems that interact with Rust's strong type system in a dynamic way, rather than just statically at compile time. This means doing things like getting fields by name or index at runtime, rather than through a get method on a trait. As seen in this example here, by simply changing nothing else in the code, but the name of the field that I'm trying to request, I change the behavior of the code. This could be replaced with some kind of user input. It also allows you to update or change fields of the reflected object without having to know anything about the underlying data structure. This allows you to insert things like user input into a struct at runtime without having to worry about type conflicts and other issues you might run into with a dynamic typing. It also provides functionality to get nested values using what it refers to as path strings. This is a way to access internal fields of an object without needing to get access to private fields or fields of subfields using a convoluted trait implementation. This again allows you to, at runtime, allow the user to supply input in order to get to where a file may be edited or dynamically generate a file path in order to get data out of a structure. You can also iterate over the fields inside of a reflected object, allowing for you to customize behavior that can work on any object passed to it without needing to know the internal structure of that object. In this example on the screen here, I can take in a raw U size, a dynamic struct that contains fields that are U sizes, or a hard-coded struct that has fields that are used sizes. Then the plus one method, which takes a dynamic reflection, will go through all of the fields that it knows how to interact with, and if they are a use size, increment them by one. Bevy Reflect also enables what it calls type reflection, which is used to implement its impulless serialization deserialization system. The trait reflection allows you to declare a trait as reflectable and then cast a reflect object into that trait object and back without needing to know the underlying type. This will return an option when done so that at runtime you can determine if a type has a trait or not. All without giving up Rust's hard type system, since Reflect keeps track of what type it initially holds and will only allow you to convert back to the original type it came from. If you need to convert to a different type, there is functionality for this, but it requires an explicit conversion. You can't just downcast a Reflect object into any arbitrary type. With all that information about what the reflect crate lets you do with your structs, you're probably wondering where and why would you give up the Rust static compile time checks for potentially error prone and crashing runtime ones? Well, there are a number of reasons you might want to work around the Rust compile time checker. In this next section, I'm going to mention three big ones that are either impossible or at the very least much more difficult to do with static check. First is serialization and deserialization of entities. Since entity component lists are decided dynamically at runtime, it is quite tedious to come up with a way to save and load entities from your world since you need to know what entities have what components and how to serialize and deserialize each component individually. This is especially difficult when you're deserializing because you need to take a string representation of a type then to find what deserializer to do to turn it into a type. Rust, as far as I'm aware, does not have good systems for doing this. Bevy Reflect does this by allowing you to register your components and their parts into the type registry that is used for serialization and deserialization of entities and their components into a scene. As seen here, I am creating a world and inserting an entity with a transform into it. I then create a registry and register the transform, the vec3, and the quaternion into that registry. I then create a dynamic scene from the world with the type registry. 
I can then serialize that scene with the type registry again. This will create a rather verbose text document that contains the type of each object and then the corresponding data to insert into it so that when it is reloading, it can look up how to construct these into reflect objects using this data and then can further from there serialize back into hard Rust types. The next big area you may need some dynamic programming magic is in scripting. This is where reflex paths can be used since they would allow you to read and pass user scripts in a type safe way without needing to implement a complex parser to get back to native Rust. And this also allows for users to declare and then later use fields on dynamic structs that may not exist at compile time. In the code on screen, I have a data struct that the user provides their script, which basically indexes into and sets a value based on a very simple parser without me needing to do any type checking and complex checking to make sure each field exists. I simply request the path and provide a type. All the fetching and unwrapping of errors is done without me needing to explicitly state any of it. The third and final example for this video of where dynamic programming is extremely useful is something I personally use all the time, and that is automatic generation of interfaces for editors and inspectors. If you have ever used Bevy Editor Please or Bevy Inspector EGUI, they are both capable of using Bevy Reflect to take your struct and extract all the information they need to create a UI that then allows you to edit and change your struct all without you needing to tell them anything about the actual structure of your struct outside of the fact that it implements the Bevy Reflect trait, which is done by registering your type in the type registry. So that's the what and the where. Finally, let's move on to why you're really here, the how. Let's start with the type registry, which appears to be being renamed to app type registry in the main branch. So that's probably going to change in 0.9. Just getting ahead of that. The type registry is exactly as the name implies, a registry of all types that have been registered into your app. This is done by calling app.register with the type when creating your app, as long as the type implements reflect. Or later when the app is actually created and running, you can request in a system the type registry and then register the type. Once your types are registered in the registry, you can get their registration by type ID or by name using the corresponding method. The registry allows you to use the short name of types if they are the only type registered with that short name. Otherwise, you have to use the full name of the type. These methods all return options so that you can tell if the type has been registered or not. Inside the type registry, you can find the type information, which is an enum which, with the variant of the different types of reflect objects, such as struct, enums, tuples, lists, etc., etc. These contain the actual metadata for the object, such as field name, along with type ID and other information like this, which is specific to things like structs or lists. Inside the registry is also the short name of the type, along with what I initially found the most confusing part, the data which is a hash map of type ID and boxed type data. The struct data is simple in reality. It's a struct containing everything needed in order to use the corresponding trait that was implemented using the reflect derive. This will be covered later in the video. You can get the corresponding data. This will return an option to an object that can be used to convert a dynamic reference to a reflect into a dynamic reference of your type. The naming scheme for the types auto-generated for data is reflect followed by your traits name. That's all there really is to the type registry, a place where information about dynamic traits is stored for later use. So on to actually implementing reflect on your own types. This is done by adding the derive reflect to our struct or enum. Tuples automatically derive reflect if all elements have reflect implemented and there are 12 or less elements in the tuple. Arrays also automatically implement as long as the item they contain implements reflect. Vector has the additional requirement of needing to derive from reflect, otherwise it won't be able to be used in a vector. But custom list types and maps will need to manually implement the reflect trait. Once we have derived reflect, we can declare the reflect metadata section and list all reflect traits we want to register for this type, as long as the type has these traits implemented on itself. This means you need to derive serialize and then reflect serialize as seen in the example on the screen. 
It is also possible to change the metadata to be reflect value, which will make reflect treat this as a value rather than a reflect object. This requires an additional clone derive. From reflect can also be derived and will implement the ability to create a struct from a reflected reference. Once this is done, it can be registered into your app in one of the two ways mentioned earlier, but this is not required to get the functionality of reflect. If you have the type directly, the register is only required for runtime dynamic interaction. To start using an object as a reflect, you can simply turn it into a dynamic pointer. This can easily be done by referencing it as that type or by calling as reflect. If you need a quick conversion or boxed if you need to keep the reflected object in that state for a long time. If you have a boxed up reflect object, it can be converted back into the underlying type with either downcast or take methods. Downcast will leave the value boxed simply by changing the box's type, whereas take will unbox the type and return the value as the corresponding type. It is important to note that these two functions only turn a reflect object back into its original type. You cannot use this to convert. If you attempt to use this to convert, it will return an error of self, allowing you to attempt to convert reflect boxes into any type, and only if they are the correct type will they succeed. There's also downcast ref and downcast mute if you need only a reference to the internal type. If you are unsure if a reflect object is of a specific type, you can use the is method, which will return true if the underlying types are the same. In the case of dynamic structs, you will need to use the represents method instead. This checks if the two object structs share a type name rather than a type ID. The difference between them is if is returns true, you can turn downcast directly into the represented type. Whereas if represents is true, you will need to use the apply method. There is also the set counterpart to apply, which hard type checks before applying the represented data. It also takes in the object, destroying it, as opposed to apply, which only takes in a reference. All reflect objects implement debug that will print out the underlying data with no recursion. There is also a clone value that can be used to duplicate reflect objects. You can use the reflect ref or reflect mute method to access some of the underlying reflect information and methods that are distinct to the data structure, such as struct specific methods or list specific method. If you need to construct a reflect at runtime without an underlying data type, you can use the dynamic structs. These exist for all the basic types in Rust, such as structs, enums, lists, and maps. These dynamic types allow you to use some of the functionality of their represented type without needing to know things at runtime, such as all the potential fields, such as the dynamic struct seen on screen here, allows you to insert new fields, and this will be all type checked and kept track of at runtime. This makes scripting even more powerful because you could use a dynamic struct to allow the user to implement a field of whatever arbitrary name they decide and have it simply must hold a specific type in order to allow for type checking by Rust at compile time. And that wraps up just about everything there is to know about Reflect that I will be covering in this video. Please leave a comment in the description if I've forgotten anything and I'll pin it so that it can be easily referenced later for future people or if I ever remake these videos. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Up next will hopefully be serialization and deserialization.